ready? Three, two, one. Welcome, Welcome to Roost on Record. Hey guys, and welcome back to Roost on Record. In light of lockdown, although we're all stuck at home, this week we'll be sharing just some items on our bucket list that test our limits, whether it be big or small. I'm Sayuni. I'm Yunji, and without any further ado, let's just jump straight into it. So, Sayuni, you should go first. Okay, so the first item on my bucket list is to travel the world with like my significant other and more specifically like one specific place that I would like to go to is Antarctica. Antarctica? (laughs) Yeah Antarctica and the reason for this is Mm -hmm. when I was in primary school I had like a really big obsession with penguins right? Yeah. It's like a lifelong dream to go to Antarctica and you know see the penguins and I think it'll be a really cool experience as well. I'm sure there's penguins not just in Antarctica. Bro (laughs) it's gonna be so cold can you imagine? Okay that that is true I get cold really easily so I feel like I might be a bit of an issue but yeah I think like the whole Antarctica vibe imagine just going and then be like surrounded by like icebergs and like snow don't you think that would be really cool I don't know I don't know too much about Antarctica but when I imagine Antarctica it's like not a place people can live in <laughs> like okay like, I don't want to live there I just want to visit there you know okay, well how long is the visit not too long because I know that if you try to stay in Antarctica like long term mm-hmm. there's some stuff that you have to do beforehand like you have to get your wisdom teeth removed and your appendix removed and I, I don't want to be doing that right so not what? too long. why is that? Like two- is that like safety reasons something yeah because oh, if, like if you get like, cold? Sick, the nearest hospital is really far away oh okay you know, makes sense removed. oh my goodness oh but like when you say around the world do you mean like the whole world yeah like, like every single continent world. How long is that going to take? But not to like every country. Oh, just like majority. Yeah, but also if I travel the world, I don't want to go to these common countries, you know, and I don't want to go to like English speaking countries. And I really want to like immerse myself in the culture, you know, like I want to live like a local. I want to like live like a local. Like I don't want to go to like some really fancy expensive hotel or anything. I just want to. I want to really different. (laughs) That just sounds like a trek. A holiday is meant to be like relaxing and like, you're meant to just chill but you're full on going on like a Duke of Ed trip around the world yeah like you know how people go hiking around the world and stuff I think that would be fun like backpacking oh my gosh no do you know those um travel youtubers and then yeah. they go around the world and then yeah. they try like really unique experiences right? yeah I think that would be really fun around the whole world I feel like you'll get tired every single day when you have to try and like I don't want to like be backpacking that was just an example you know? Oh, okay. <laughs> you know those travel youtubers and then they like test out different airlines and then they go like on special trains and special types of hotels like those weird hotels and stuff no I thought you meant like testing out like first class airlines and I was like yeah that sounds like a vibe and then you were like yeah I want to do that as well oh okay actually I vibe with that well but I feel like if it's with your significant other that would be a good experience solo traveling around the world I don't think I could do that oh my god I don't think I could do that I don't have enough independence yeah I can't do that either and you're like by yourself in a foreign land that's so scary I don't think I can do that before I I really hated traveling right I couldn't even use public transport right really like up until last year Mm -hmm. I had never gone on public transport by myself what (laughs) like every single time for school we had to like go to the city my mom would have to take me on public transport right yeah I'd never gone so I was always like really scared of like transport. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I always thought I was gonna get lost. Oh. So every single time, even when it came to like plane rides, I really didn't like it, like the whole traveling experience, because I always thought I was gonna get lost. Mm-hmm. So that's why I, before I used to always say that my ideal trip would be to like I like the experience of traveling, but not going to the destination. What does that even mean? <laughs> like I like being on the plane, or I like being on the bus or on the train. But I don't like arriving at the destination. Wait, so you like the plane trip, but you don't like the actual holiday? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. This is my favorite part. So I used to always say, like, 
of my ideal trip is taking a plane from Sydney, going around the world, and then coming back to Sydney. Oh my, <laughs> that's not even a holiday. That's just that's just a plane ride. ride. Sounds fun. Yeah, honestly, though, I love plane rides. They're so exciting. The best part of trips is going on the plane to the place. I mean, clearly, if you're scared of going on public transport, your wish to travel around the world that's like a big jump. My public transport fee has reduced. It's gone. Oh, yeah, okay, that's I, good. I, I can take public transport confidently now. We love that. We love that. Oh, yeah. Speaking on like your idea on traveling around the world, let's tell them our camp story. Okay, so basically, um, Sini and I were in the same group for year 11 camp, and there was like this activity where what was it? We had to pick like three, three values. Yeah, three values that we wish to like embed in our lives. And I don't really remember what I chose, but I chose, you chose love. Oh, I chose love and I chose integrity or something like that. And then Sayuni was like, what did you pick? I chose positivity, mm -hmm. creativity, and adventure. <laughs> Yeah, and I was like flaming to uni. I was like, out of all those life values you could have chose, you chose adventure. Okay, positivity, I kind of understand. Creativity. Oh, no, it was optimism. Optimism, oh, optimism, optimism. Yeah, okay, optimism is like... You flame me for that one as well. Okay, imagine I'm like stuck in the worst case scenario. Like... I'm lost in a foreign land while I'm traveling the world and someone's robbed me or something. What's optimism going to do? I'm going to be like, oh, at least I'm traveling. Like, Exactly. It makes you like happy, right? Like you at least get to see some good in things. But that's not going to solve the problem. You're lost in a foreign land without any money. You're robbed and you're like, oh, at least I'm happy about it. At least I'm optimistic about it. There's no about problem like crying about it, right? <laughs> So you just have to see the okay, you know what, that's true. Maybe I'm just too pessimistic. Yeah, and so with my bucket list, just mm -hmm. remember that adventure was one of my values. Okay, and with mine, my one's like the opposite. Remember, I'm all about like consistency. Like I want my life to just be consistent. And Sayuni so wants her life to be full of adventure. Like she wants the ups and downs of life. Okay, I feel like my first one's on everyone's bucket list, but it's something I really want to do. I want to go bungee jumping or skydiving. Like, I really want to. I don't have a fear of heights, but you know that feeling, like your stomach flipping feeling you get when you're like, when you're on a roller coaster or something? I literally hate that feeling, but I'm not like scared of it. I just hate it. It just feels really weird. But I feel like bungee jumping or skydiving, once I do it, I'm going to feel invincible. I'm going to feel like nothing can stop me. I literally jumped off a plane or like a cliff. So that's something I really want to do. With that, mm -hmm. I was thinking like, oh, maybe I should put skydiving or bungee jumping on yeah. my list as well. Yeah. But then I thought about it and like, I could live without doing that. Because, <laughs> no, because I have a fear of heights, even though you deny my fear, okay? I so guys, you gotta hear me out. So at camp, Sunni was like, guys, I have like the biggest fear of heights. And I was like, oh yeah, that's okay. Our camp was like, we do like the giant swing and like abseiling and stuff. And I was like, oh yeah, that's fair. You don't need to do the activities if you have a fear of heights. And Sunni proceeds to do all the activities like three times. Like she went abseiling twice and like you were about to go on you did the um the what's it called the um pirates yeah you did high ropes like three times i swear to god i'm sorry but i can't believe you when you say you have a fear of height no when we were doing that abseiling thing i was literally about to cry you i think i cried more time. than you like we were doing it at the same time right you went before me and yeah. you were screaming that literally like scared me so much i was literally about to tell the guy no nah, i'm not doing it because you and you up... made me so scared you yeah, ended up yeah. going twice i think i at that point had a bigger fear of heights than you because like we were like doing it at the exact same time but I was going down first it was so scary like it was an actual cliff and I was so scared I was like see uni see uni I'm going down now see uni I'm going down now and see uni I looked up from the top and she looked so scared exactly but the only reason I went twice was because after I finished my first go I was so disappointed in myself I was like wow that was terrible because I was so bad at abseiling so I was basically just hanging and he was like letting me down half the time so I was really disappointed in myself so I was like I have to go again because that doesn't even count as a go yeah so. I don't know I feel like that's not the behavior of someone who has a fear of height like I don't feel like someone who has a fear of height to decide to go on that twice willingly you know about the, how you said you wanted to do bungee jumping right yeah like I went to New Zealand like yeah. a year ago mm -hmm. and then my brother and like all my family friends yeah they all went bungee jumping right yeah like, so I was the only one that didn't go because yeah. I was so scared you know the hair raiser at Luna Park yeah. I was like let me first do the hair 
hair razor because yeah. I've never gone on that before. Yeah, yeah. I was like, let's do the hair razor. Mm-hmm. And if I can get over the hair razer, I can, yeah. next time I come to New Zealand, I'll yeah. go do bungee jumping. Mm-hmm. And did you get to go on the hair razor? It was like lockdown after that. So. Uh, yeah. oh, the hair razor, I feel like the going up part is so much scarier than the going down part. Like the going up part, I'm like... <laughs> But the going down part finishes in like three seconds. Yeah, so that's that. Bungee jumping and skydiving. Do you want to go next? Would you do indoor skydiving? Or like the actual thing? Wait, there's indoor skydiving? Yeah, like, you know, I fly. Oh, like that thing where you like, <laughs> yeah. you like, go okay, that. Oh my God, that looks so fun. I want to do that. I really want to do that. I wouldn't mind that. Yeah, that, that seems looks... like less scary that's than like, actual skydiving. That's not even skydiving. That's like flying. Yeah, I really want to do that. I guess with that, you don't really get like the free falling. Yeah. Because oh. with actual skydiving, you like, jump out of the plane and you're actually free falling for a few seconds actually to be honest though once I'm like at the plane door I don't think I'll be able to jump I feel like the person <laughs> with bungee jumping as well I don't think I'll be able to willingly jump I feel like someone would have to push me off for me to do that they're not allowed to push you I have to do it myself yeah my friend he was up there and then he asked the guy who was like can you push me because yeah. he was so scared as well yeah, and they're yeah. like no I can't push you have to jump by yourself no I don't think I have the self-control to jump off that plane by myself maybe I can't do bungee jumping and skydiving <sighs> Okay, so my second item is learning new skills. So like some specific skills. I have like a list of stuff I want to learn before I die. What is it? Okay. There's drumming, mm-hmm. singing, skateboarding, mm-hmm. BMX, mm-hmm. surfing, mm-hmm. and magic. Whoa, <laughs> that's a lot you want to accomplish. <laughs> What's the first one? Drumming? I agree with you on that. I think drumming is so cool. It looks so like, sick. I, I play the instrument right now, but it's not a cool instrument. What drumming instrument is, like, is it? Cool. I play the euphonium. Wait, what is that? It's like a tube but tiny oh, wait that's so cool you play like a niche instrument i used to play the violin that's so lame that's like 90 percent of the population plays violin i swear i think violin's cooler than a euphonium do you know what a euphonium sounds like it literally sounds like a fart <laughs> yeah <laughs> but like it's cool like you can flex that's like a party trick like you can bring it on your phone to a party and just play it do you want to see one thing i did learn from playing the euphonium i can yeah. do this <laughs> Is that, is that the biggest skill you learn from playing? <laughs> yeah, that's my biggest skill. That's pretty cool, actually. Maybe I'll try. Okay, maybe, okay, maybe not. Okay, I can't do that. Okay, drumming. And then what was the next one again? Um, I think it's skateboarding. Skateboarding. Oh my gosh. Oh, me too. Singing, singing, sorry. Singing, singing. Oh, I want to learn. Like, professional singing? Like, what kind of singing? I want to be able to sing as good as you, MG. Oh, shut up, baby. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just want to have, like... Some talent, because you know how you don't have to like be born with it. Like you know how you can learn how to sing, right? Yeah. So right now I have zero talent. So I think like, if I take, yeah. if I take like a few classes, I mm-hmm. think I can be able to get up to your level. Maybe probably I a bit worse, but you're gonna have to reach higher than my level. Like you know what I want to learn how to do? I want to learn how to opera sing, like professionally. That's so cool, isn't it? Like it sounds so cool. Is that your party trick? Yeah, that's my party trick. Like at a party, I'll just show up and like opera. Sing. I feel like that would be cooler. Oh yeah. But that's because you're already good at singing. I'm like starting no. from zero, so I just want to get like a little bit good. No, no, no. But like I'm fine with like I love singing just like randomly. But like when soon as someone tells me to sing, like as soon as someone's like, guys, you're just singing. Listen, I I can't, I can't. I'm sorry. I remember in year eight we had to do like a music assessment. We had to like form a band and sing a pop song, and I really didn't want to sing because I literally had a fear of singing in front of people. And so I was like, guys, can I please? Please just play like the bass or like the guitar. But they're like, you and Gina, you're so bad at the guitar. Like you're going to let the team down. You have to sing. So I was the singer and we sung Stitches by Sean Mendes. As soon as they started playing the instrumentals, I sang like just the wrong tune. Like it was like an octave higher and it was like the wrong tune. And I started off really high. So as soon as I got to the really high part, like move on. Like I literally, my throat couldn't go that high. It was so embarrassing. I literally wanted to cry after that. We had to do that in year eight as well. I also didn't want to sing because yeah. I can't sing. This is why I need to learn how to sing. But then I played the piano. Oh, wait, that's pretty good. That's like the main. I played one hand because I couldn't do both. Oh my gosh, on that note, you also, um, skateboarding. Yeah. you also said you had skateboarding. Yeah, but like one of my things is learn to skateboard. Skateboarding is so sick. Like last year, because I got house captain, right? Yeah. So I asked my parents for a present for getting yeah. that. And they were literally like, oh, I'll buy you a skateboard, right? Yeah. And they still haven't gotten it from me. <laughs> but also, I think if I skateboard, I'm going to be wearing like full shin pads. Oh, no, me pads, too. Because yeah. I know I'm going to fall. Yeah, yeah, me too. No, on TikTok, you see like those really cool skateboarders, like skateboarders. 
skating with like they don't even have a helmet on they're just like skating in like skater clothes and they're like going down those skate ramps where I'm having a full-on helmet and like body gear or else I'm actually going to get a concussion I don't get how they do that right before year seven started it was like mm-hmm. a week four mm-hmm. I was at my friend's house and I tried going on a skateboard for the first time yeah but I was like a little bit dumb so I went on it on a downhill ride oh my gosh so I, started, I started rolling back and I fell off the skateboard oh my god and I landed on my thigh right yeah yeah, yeah. and then I couldn't walk at all I couldn't stand up oh my like, goodness my parents had to carry me they carried me to the hospital right <laughs> oh no and then I had to get like an x-ray and stra- stuff because uh-huh. I thought I got like a fracture yeah but then it ended up that I just like destroyed all the tissue in my thigh right oh yeah yeah, yeah. so then I couldn't walk for like a week and then mm-hmm. I ended up missing the first two days of year seven no those are like the most important days that's when like the kids are like seeing each other and like so I have like past trauma from skateboarding but okay. I think I can get over it you're gonna overcome it that's part of your bucket list and then similar to skateboarding I also have BMX and surfing because I think those are also cool hobbies <laughs> I feel like they're cool for a reason like that's those are really hard the BMX that's intense Wait, with your skill when you said you want to learn skateboarding was that it or did you have any other skills you wanted there's like a lot of things I want to do let me just think I the one I had was skateboarding but I want to drums is definitely one as well I really want to learn how to play with drums and oh my gosh you know like the Olympics I was like I used to watch the Olympics every single day like that was like my only thing I I watched and I think diving is so cool that was like my favorite sport of the Olympics I want to learn how to dive as well and yeah that's diving you have to like you have to be flexible as well yeah you gotta I can't do that (laughs) because I used to do ballet so I think I didn't know that you don't seem like someone who'd do ballet I don't oh well fun fact I used to do ballet so you know for the thing in PE where you like touch your toes oh yeah yeah yeah. oh I don't remember did you get 50 50 50 I don't remember. Why? What did you get? I used to get like 25. <laughs> I was really bad at it. Yeah, but this, you don't need to be flexible. What are some other skills I want to learn? Actually, that's it. Can okay. you draw? Like, I'm not even joking. I wish I was joking, guys, when I say this, but I'm probably like the worst drawer, like, in the world. Like, not even exaggerating. I can't draw. It's actually a problem. On Gartic phone, you're not that bad. Oh, really? Yeah, you're not that bad. Oh, really? The people are worse. Oh, really? Wait, not you were me. really good on Gartic phone. <laughs> me? Yeah, I remember your drawings. They were so good. Thank you. Oh my gosh, yeah. I want to know how, to, I want to learn how to draw. Like, I want to be good at drawing. That's also something I want to do, but. I feel like drawing is really hard to learn how to be good. Yeah, I feel like people just. I feel like singing is easier. No, that's true. I used to go to art class and I'm still not good at drawing. So maybe it does require some sort of natural talent. But you know the skateboarding yeah. one? That was on your list, right? Yeah. Do you want to just say another one? Okay. My, my other one is I want to go on a hot air balloon but specifically with my significant other <laughs> wouldn't that be so cool I like think, I think that'd yeah. be really romantic right that's so that's a vibey like during like sunrise so you like get to see the sunrise up in the clouds on a hot air balloon with your significant other but also isn't there like an operator on the hot air balloon yeah but like we could just ignore <laughs> the operator imagine that that's like such a big third wheel <laughs> Imagine like your significant other like trying to propose to you or something on a hot air balloon and then there's like a, some random operator there listening to the whole thing. Yeah, that's like we have a spectator. We have a spectator. I don't mind. What if you say no when they ask if you? I say the no. I can't. Like, I'm not even going to try to imagine that. I'm not even going to manifest that. Like that's <laughs> traumatizing. That was something on my bucket list. Why do you want to go on a hot air balloon? Just the vibe? So lit. Like you're on a balloon up in the sky isn't that so cool what if you fall out you no know, why do you have so many what ifs <laughs> okay we won't fall out so everyone during on her air balloons i'm sure i wouldn't fall out unless there's a specific balloons. place you want to huh? go hot air ballooning oh, i haven't really thought of that like i know they do it in paris oh my gosh that would be so good yeah i like that but i don't really mind just anywhere pretty what's the next item on yours my one was kind of similar to your antarctica one so i was lucky not in a position <laughs> to blame you for your antarctica i do but my mom wants to like go to like the Antarctic or like Iceland or something and see, you know, the Aurora. Oh, the yeah, yeah. I want to see that. The I Northern like, Light. Yeah, I feel like that'll look so cool. But also, I'm so. I like hate the cold so I don't know if this is gonna work but then also you know with like looking at the northern lights right mm-hmm. 
Why can't you just look at it on YouTube? It doesn't hit the same for <laughs> uni. That's like saying, why would you travel the world? You can just look at it on YouTube. Okay, good point. That I doesn't work that. like that. With traveling the world, I'm going there to experience like activities. Like yeah. physically do things, not yeah. look at things. What do you mean? I'm witnessing a beautiful once in a lifetime scene. What are you no, like, I hate going to places and just looking at things. That's so boring. Oh, so you're all about that adventure lifestyle. Yeah, I want to actually like physically like be doing things, you know, not just staring at the sky. What do you mean? That's such a beautiful, I'm not staring at just any random sky. I'm staring at the northern light. I'm staring at something beautiful. But how long do you think you could stare at that for? Like, I think it would get old after like 10 minutes. Okay, to be honest, I'm not going to lie, me too. But like, it's not about that getting bored. It's just about seeing it. My parents, they they really like like looking at things. Like, Oh my gosh, like museums? Um, no, like like na- nature stuff. Like, oh, yeah, um, yeah. Also, when I went to New Zealand, we went on like this boat cruise, right? Yeah. And it was just like driving around like the water for like three hours. Yeah. And my parents really enjoy that because they like seeing like, then mm. after like 10 minutes for me, it gets boring because mm. it's like the same thing. Yeah, that's kind of true. I don't know. I want to see it. That, how fun would that be? Like you see it and you're in the snow and you're just like, so it's nighttime. I think if I went with like another person like a significant other I think that'd be fun I don't know if you're going to be Antarctic by myself I feel like if you want to go on a holiday with someone they have to have really similar like holiday styles to you like are you kind of that person that makes like a strict day plan for what you're going to do or are you just like YOLO like you just work it out on the spot I like working it out on the spot yeah me too if you have like a set plan I feel like it's too restrictive like you're meant to go on holiday have fun like exactly I don't want it to be like a schedule right but some people they like plan everything out and they're like okay nine o'clock to ten o'clock we're gonna go here I respect it but like that defeats the purpose of a holiday you're meant to just like go and explore places and just do what you want but at the same time I also want to make sure that I'm doing enough stuff in the day because like I don't want to finish my trip and be like wow I wasted my time here actually I wouldn't mind wasting my time I feel like as long as it was a good time it would would, it's not gonna matter I feel like having some rest days is good in the mm-hmm. holiday but I feel like if I had too much at the end of the whole trip I'd be like wow I really oh, yeah. my time. it depends how many days your holiday is if it's like three days I'm sorry we have no time to rest we're like on a roll but if it's like weeks then we can definitely have like just rest days okay my next one is to go to the Olympic either as a viewer but more like I would rather go as a participant whoa that's a big dream <laughs> What's more? <laughs> wait, 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 let me explain this. Okay. I saw this on TikTok, right? So basically, you know how the 2032 Olympics, like the one in 11 years, right? Yeah. You know how it's in Brisbane? I think if you strategically plan it out, I don't think it will be that difficult to become a participant because first, you just have to choose a sport that no one does, right? Okay. So yeah. my plan is European handball. Okay. <laughs> like, have you heard of anyone who plays European handball? No, right? Yeah, but European handball sounds so hard. It's literally like soccer, but you like bounce it and like you have to bounce it into the goal, right? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. That's my first plan. Choose European handball. Yeah. Next, I have 11 years, right? Mm-hmm. If I start training now, don't yeah. you think I can get good enough in 11 years to participate? Or to consider that no one plays it? Do you want to be winning a medal or do you just want to go there and play and just lose? <laughs> I just want to go there and play. What? <laughs> So you don't even want to win. You just want to go and play. But also, like, I might be able to win, right? If no one plays European handball, there might be a chance. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of countries <laughs> play European handball. It's just not as famous. Okay, but, like, the medal isn't the main goal. The main goal is just to participate, you know? Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. So I trained for 11 years, right? Like, yeah. if you think about, like, the sports I play right now, like, mm-hmm. I've played basketball for seven years, and I haven't even tried that hard, yeah. but I've been able to go from, like, zero to, like, decent, right? My thinking is that if I can actually try in like yeah. 11 years, I can get good enough on a national level. National? No like, okay. yeah, I, I don't know about this. I think you're really underestimating <laughs> how much work it needs to get into a national team. How many yeah, people in a European that... handball team? Probably like 15. Oh, yeah, that's quite a few. I don't actually, know. That's quite a lot. I've never looked at European handball. Oh, you just made it up. Maybe like 10. I don't know. 
but yeah. still. And then the special thing is, so even after you have a national team, you know, for the Olympics, how you have to actually qualify. So like you have to yeah. meet like the yeah. international level, right? Yeah. The thing is, there's a rule where it's, if your country is hosting the Olympics, oh, yeah, you're you like don't have to do that qualifying. Yeah, 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 you yeah. automatically qualify. Yeah. So because in 2032, it's being held in Brisbane, then I don't even have to qualify. Like my team doesn't even have to be good. I just have to make it into the team. And okay. that's why I found out how to get into the Olympics. You know, I had a teacher in primary school who got into the Olympics for European handball. Oh, is this where it came from? No, yeah, this came from a TikTok, but then that's also a coincidence. Oh, really? Actually, maybe you're making it sound like it's really easy. Like now I'm getting convinced that there's a legit chance to get into European handball. Exactly. You should come join with me. Train with I'm me. not <laughs> joining European <laughs> Even if I want to, mate, I can't. I can't join the national European handball team. I'm sorry. I don't think there's that big of a demand for European handball. Like, have you ever heard of European handball? Like, okay, but like, have you ever okay, asked the like, person, what sport do you play? And they're like, European handball. Yeah, but my thing is, if I'm going to just spend 11 years training to get into a national team, I want to be winning something at the Olympics. I don't want to just go to the Olympics and lose in the first preliminary round. Okay, if you train hard enough in the first 11 years, maybe you can become good enough to become like a team carry. Me become a team carry? I'm yeah. training for 11 years. I'm sure that's not how it works. I'm sure there are like people in the European handball team that train their whole life for European handball. It's so, okay. If I'm going to go to the Olympics, I want to be winning something. I want to come home with a medal. I can I come home with pride, Yumji. Pride? Yeah, for just making the Olympics. And okay, no, that's if, true. If that's not an option, if being a participant is an option, in 2032, at least like to watch it. Or go as right. those, you know, those people who are like in soccer, whenever the ball gets out of the field, they the kids like, oh, like throw a ball back. Ball. <laughs> or like tennis. <laughs> yeah, I want to go as that. I want to go as one of those more than a competitor. That's so fun. Yeah, you, you can like train. You have to train for that as well. Oh, you have to train for that? Yeah, I still like this training thing for ball boys for tennis. Then oh, you have to like, really? You have to like practice running off the ball and stuff. Oh, I you thought just, like, <laughs> Oh, my bad, my bad. I <laughs> underestimated the effort that you... Oh, then... Oh, I thought anyone could just sign up and do it because I really want to do it. I think that's so cool. And like I can interact with the athletes. Like I can like give them the ball. That would be so cool. Maybe you can be like a cafeteria worker at the Olympic <laughs> Village. <laughs> like at the Olympic Village. You can like Oh wait, no, that's athletes. actually kind of cool. No, that's so cool. And I'll like serve the athletes food and I can like meet all the athletes. No, honestly, that's really cool. I would want to do that. But I'm sure that also requires me to cook <laughs> and like be good at cooking. So Maybe not. Wait, I don't even have anything else on my bucket list. That was it. I have two more. Okay, yeah. you can say yours. So when I'm like older, as in like after my children have their own lives, right? Yeah. I want to own a farm. <gasps> that reminds <laughs> me of my dream. Have you heard of my dream? No. My after retirement plan, I'm going to retire and I'm going to go to Switzerland and I'm going to live in a goat farm with my family. No, with like, yeah, I'm going to own a goat farm and that's like my source of income, like selling like goat cheese and like goat milk and I'm just gonna live in a farm in Switzerland that's also part of my bucket list I think that's cool yeah I, I like like that life like yeah. after retirement though yeah after retirement wait are you like a do you want to be living like during like not like pre-retirement do you want to be living in like the city like bustling and hustling with people or do you want to be living in like a calm just calm suburb kind of I think in my like prime years yeah yeah, yeah. I would rather be hustling like yeah. and like busy in the city like Sydney but then after retirement I think I'd like to have like karma yeah like own a farm I probably won't use it as a source of income like <laughs> you but I might just have it for fun I'd have like a range of animals and like vegetables and like I wouldn't even go to the grocery store anymore because I just eat vegetables from my garden but then also my animals I wouldn't kill them for me oh yeah yeah, yeah. they would just be my friends you know and then, oh, oh. <laughs> friends and I might like okay yeah I might like just get them for like milk or like eggs but not yeah 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 and then then I want to live in like one of those rural communities you know where everyone's like really tight-knit and then like you go to your neighbor's house and you give them eggs (laughs) and then they they give you like produce in return that's like the idealistic life I want and like you know those that life where it's like you're really close with your like butcher and like your hairdresser and stuff like that and like you guys are just like a really tight-knit community I feel like you watched a lot of Netflix shows. <laughs> but there's 
TV show that I used to watch when I was little. It was like yeah. some Australian cottage like show. <laughs> and I got really inspired by that lifestyle. And I really want that. Actually, so that's really not fun. Fun. Actually, yeah, I, I agree with you. That's something also on my bucket list. I want to be living like, like when I'm working, like in my working years, I want to be living like in the heart of the city, like hustling and bustling. But then after retirement, I want to be like chilling in a farmhouse. I think those are the vibes. I think that lifestyle is like really good because it's like you're old, right? You can't really do much with a busy lifestyle. So I feel like it's nice and relaxing for like an old person. And also you can like use that agriculture knowledge, you know? <laughs> I've forgotten it all, but I can start fresh. And my final item on my bucket list is mm-hmm. to go to a concert. So I've never been to a proper concert. Mm-hmm. And I think it seems like a vibe, you know? Or oh, like a music concert? Yeah, like- music concert. Concert. I went on this like national scout camp. They had like a concert there for Justice Crew. That's kind of cool. <laughs> the Australian band. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure they disbanded, but I'm actually I'm not gonna lie, I'm not <laughs> familiar with the Justice Crew. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but this is irrelevant. But you know, there's this guy in Justice Crew. You know how there's twins? No, well, I don't. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's twins. One of them is called John, I think. But he's a Wiggle now. Is my like, color Wiggle? Purple. Really? Wasn't purple Jeff? Wake yeah, up, but they yeah. got like it got like more um like multicultural oh, and diverse. Oh, oh, right, 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 right. There's like multiple of each color now. There's like seven wiggles now as well. That's Whoa, cool. that is a lot. Yeah, and then the Justice Crew guys. One of them. <laughs> so you went but, to the Justice Crew concert? Yeah, it was like part of that like camp, right? Mm-hmm. And then I was like in like the second row or something, like the third row. I was like really close, right? And then like I was in the Justice Crew fan, right? Like, yeah. but then I feel like the whole concert vibe it like yeah. brought out something new in me you know mm. like I was like yelling the whole time and like screaming and singing yeah, 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 it, was, yeah. like, it was like such a fun experience so I feel like if I actually went to a concert of someone that I like I think it would be so fun yeah I went to um like a BTS concert when they came to see me <laughs> and like I'm not gonna lie I was kind of I wasn't that of a hardcore army like I didn't really know their songs properly but like I liked them but I didn't know all their songs so like when I went to the concert everyone was like cheering on and like singing the songs with them and I was just sitting down and I couldn't and I couldn't really enjoy it and then like a couple of years ago I went to the Blackpink concert that was really fun those are the only two concerts I've been to but I want to go to another one for both of them I was sitting down like you know how you were in like the front row yeah. <laughs> the front row I was like always sitting down in both of them so I want to I want to try being in the standing area and I can like you know jump and party like my concert it was like in an outdoor arena right so then hey, that's so cool there's no seat a oh, pit and everyone was, wait, that's so yeah, fun everyone was, so everyone's just like jumping around yeah, yeah I want to experience then, Everyone was standing up, so then you get like pushed right forward as well. Oh my That's god! Like problem. You know the um at camp we had that silent disco. Yeah. Oh my gosh! So basically, <laughs> I feel like the first beginning part, no one was really like jumping up and down. Like everyone was just kind of it was really awkward because it's like a silent disco. Like that's so weird. And then during like the last couple of songs, I remember um you know Low Shall I got them apple bottom. Yeah, yeah. Back. Yeah, that song came on, and that song is like my favorite song in the whole entire world. So I started jumping up and down and crazy, and I was like partying. And then by the middle of the song, everyone was jumping up and down, but I was like pushed into the middle. And let me just tell you, it was like a tight space, right? And like people were wearing like their pajamas, like really thick clothes, and everyone was so squished together. And I was in the middle, I was literally like getting thrashed around. Like people were like, <laughs> this, and I, my head was literally getting thrashed around, and I literally couldn't breathe. No, that was, was really fun. I want to experience that again. I think if I went to a concert, like of someone that I liked, mm-hmm. I think I would spend a lot of money. Yeah. Because I, I want like a good the, like yeah, seat. experience. You know yeah. those people like that camp out for tickets like overnight. Yeah, yeah. Would I you think do I'll that? Be, I would do that. Like I would definitely do that. If they're like, oh, there's a black pink concert next year, yeah. I would camp out, definitely. Honestly, no. I, would, I would spend all my money on it. Like you know how um after the concert you can do like meet like the Oh yeah, the meeting them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would I would pay for that as well. <laughs> I feel like the camping out thing would be fun though if you're like with like friends also like a lot of the time you're not allowed to bring stuff into the venue right so if you camp out whatever you bring don't they usually like throw it out oh so you can't bring like a sleeping bag like i think you can but then they might confiscate it and throw it away i guess it's like you can sacrifice it if you camp out 
then you have to bring food and people bring like tents and stuff as well. I feel like that's kind of fun though if you like doing it with friends. The only issue with camping out is like I'll probably like stay up at night because I don't want to like sleep on the street. I feel like that's a bit dangerous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll probably like try my best to stay up as long as possible. Then what happens if during the concert I get so tired yeah, and then I'm like, screaming and sweating and then I just pass out. Exactly. And then I ruin my experience. Exactly. You're risking that bro. <laughs> Wait, why do people even camp out? Is it because like the standing area, there's like no designated seat? So you have to like, in order to get to the front row, you have to go in first. I think it's something like that. I think you can get better seats like the earlier you come. Oh, well, that's unlucky. But I feel like if if there was like this group that I like, like a diehard fan for, I feel like I would do that because that's like a once in a lifetime experience and I want to get yeah. make the most out of it. Yeah, you're right. And I think for, um, for if it was something, someone that like really liked, right? Yeah. I feel like I wouldn't mind staying up for them, right? Okay, and yeah. Also during the concert, I feel like the an- adrenaline will like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you're right, you're right. And like, I would like force myself not to think. Yeah, me too. If I would possible. like slap myself. I feel like, yeah. you should wake up. I feel like um after the concert, I'll definitely lose my voice. I'm going to give everything I got during that concert. I'm going to no. yell so loudly. You know, at the BTS concert, I didn't even sing out loud and I somehow lost my voice by the next day. Like... I don't know. I think it's just a constant thing. Like I was literally like for most of the whole, most of the experience, I was just sitting down and just like listening to them. But then the next day I lost my voice. So I think if you're like going to actually like scream and party, you would definitely lose your voice. So why did you go to the um BTS and Blackpink concert? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so basically someone I knew worked with them. So like they could get like tickets for like cheaper or something. So then I was like, oh my gosh, like BTS and Blackpink, like that's like so cool. And I can get them for cheap and they're probably never gonna come back to Australia so I, I bought the tickets and I went but it was really fun I wish I was in the standing area because the standing area people they looked like they were having so much fun they were all like jumping up and down with their um hot light sticks and they were all like singing along I wanted to be part of that wait are you not allowed to stand up in the seat you can but like the people around me weren't so <laughs> I just felt a bit awkward. I was just sitting down. I feel like I wouldn't be able to fully experience it if I didn't stand up and jump. How far were you from the stage? Like, could the, like, singers see you? For the BTS concert, I was, like, really far away. They were, like, ants. Like, (laughs) I could barely see them. But for the Blackpink concert, I was, like, pretty close. I don't know if they saw me, but I saw them. So if you came to Sydney again, would you spend all your money there? Yes, but I also don't have much money because I don't have a job (laughs) So this money is coming from my parents, not me. I'm going to have to pay them back when I'm older. Yeah. But like, if I could convince my parents, I would. Yeah, definitely. Because mm-hmm. it's like a once-in-a-lifetime experience, yeah, exactly. right? And they're yeah. going to, like, disband soon. So if they were coming, I'd spend yeah. all my money on them. That's true, that's true. Do you have any more bucket list items? I had some ones that like, weren't as important. Do you want to share them? We stuff like having a family account. Or <laughs> Why is that part of your bucket list? Is that not something you want to eventually do? Then I have to put like getting a job in my bucket list. <laughs> This is another part of the learning skills thing. Yeah. But I want to be, like, really handy. Like, you know handyman? Like, you can, like, fix anything. I want to be yeah. able to do that. Like, fix what? Like, fix anything. Like, computers? Something's like broken, cars? I can fix it. If my car is broken, I can fix it. If, like, there's, like, a hole in the wall, I can fix it. If there's, like, a plumbing leak or something, I can fix it. Because I feel like no one would not want to be that. This is, like, a life goal. <laughs> I want to be handy. <laughs> Being handy would be cool, I guess. Because, like, if you're handy, like, life would be so easy. Like, you can fix anything anything you want you don't have to ask for help like you know how much money you're gonna save okay no that's true but how do you learn to be handy that just comes from experience that's the only problem <laughs> compared to the average 16 year old i think no, i'm handy. pretty handy i wish i could relate i did dt like four mm-hmm. years right mm-hmm. but i think i've learned stuff from like if you ask me say you need go build a chair yeah. i feel like if you give me gave me like a few hours i could build a chair for you really well can you build a chair for me then if you gave me like a few hours and like a tech room i think i could do it. really okay i'll ask see you next time I want a chair I think I'm really bad with like hands-on stuff like drawing back in my old school we did um we did textiles and you know the sewing machine I was using the sewing machine and I sewed the needle through my thumb like oh oh, it didn't come out the other side it wasn't working like the sewing machine was jammed right so I was like 
why isn't this thing working? And I pressed on the pedal, like I constantly pressed it. And then it like lagged a bit. And then suddenly it went in, in, and then it went in and it stayed there. And I was like, wait, did a needle just go through my thumb? And I like stood there for three seconds. Um, My friend was next to me and I was like, I think I sewed my needle through my thumb. And then she looked and there was like blood everywhere. And she was like, ah, did you take it out? So then I took it out and it was just not a good time. Yeah. So I think I'm really bad at like hand stuff. So I would love to be a handy person. Is there anything um, else that you had on you? No, there was like, there's nothing else. Like when I was making my bucket list, I was like looking through some ideas, right? Mm-hmm. And then I was about to put like see the seven wonders then I thought about it and you know how I said that like looking at things is boring right? <laughs> that's what I thought I was like would I really want to like go see like the pyramids or something like yeah that's so cool <laughs> like, it, it would be cool but then there's so many like better things I'd rather do <laughs> if you gave me the options of like seeing the pyramids versus like backpacking around Egypt or I, oh I would choose backpacking around Egypt I would choose seeing pyramids in a heartbeat but that's so boring no it's not it's so cool okay fine I respect your adventure lifestyle <laughs> With our bucket list, we're basically just trying to promote uh, venturing out and going out of your comfort zone because you basically never know where like an activity is going to take you. So a big part of my personality, I think, is basketball, right? So like when I was in year five, the only reason I started playing basketball was because one of my friends, she like dragged me to try out. I feel like if I never went to that tryout, I, w- I would have never started playing basketball. And then that domino effect would have led me to probably like never becoming sports captain right now, right? Mm-hmm. So I feel like you should just like try as many things as possible because you never know where it's going to take you I agree with that like I feel like back in the olden days back in my days <laughs> I used to not want to try out for things and try new things because I was so scared of failing I remember I used to be so scared of like sport trials or like getting into like PWSA teams because I was so scared I wasn't going to get in and I would like if you don't try you're destined to not get in but like if you try at least you have that even if it's small you still have a chance like you never know and um yeah I think it's just really important important to you know venture out try new things especially when we're young and if we fail that's okay whatever that's part of the experience YOLO and if we get in I mean that's even better it's kind of crazy if you think about it like both Yunji and I we mm-hmm. will both interact execs right mm-hmm. so it's like kind of crazy to think that if neither of us like submitted that application for interact yeah, yeah. we probably would have never experienced like everything like yeah. being a social justice leader was and then all of that I feel like that all led up to being a prefect as well mm-hmm. so that like one simple action yeah, of yeah, yeah. filling in an application has like yeah led us to so many opportunities yeah like you don't need to be taking a big leap from your comfort zone or you don't need to be trying out for something big just to make a change in your life like just doing something as small or something as big can make a really big difference like what Suyuni said it just creates like a ripple effect one small change can lead onto something bigger and bigger and bigger uh hopefully Suyuni and I get to tick off everything in our bucket list um we don't know how long that's gonna take but hopefully we do and yeah so I guess that wraps up this week's episode Thanks guys for tuning in and keep an eye out for me at the 2032 Olympics. Yeah, um, hope you guys all keep safe and see you next week. Bye.